MMA Odds Breaker, I'm Frank Trigg. That's Nathan Coy. Down in Coconut Creek, Florida. Of course, American Top Team. He's getting ready to fight Andy Yurick coming up here on uh, Bellator. What is it, 101? Like, I'm starting to lose numbers between the UFC and What's Bellator. There? There's so many stinking numbers. It's just like, I'm not a, I don't, I do you guys track. keep track? Do you guys keep track of the numbers? Uh, not at all. I just uh, got the Dalmatians in my head now, so I'll just say 101. <laughs> that's, yeah, so. that's the one I'm on. That's all I know. I don't know anything else other than that. All right. So let's, let's break down. Uh, 101 class right here. Let's break down uh, Andy Urich real quick. What do you what do you see out of Andy? You know, you're twelve and four. He's eight and three. You've obviously yeah. got more experience, but does that really factor into this fight? And what do you see Andy bringing to the bringing into the cage that you haven't seen before? Um, I don't think he brings anything in the cage I haven't seen before. He looks like a competitor. He looks like he uh, he gets after it. He he you know, he enjoys being in there, and uh, that's typically what I get. I get guys that want to scrap. I uh, want to bang it out, and he looks like that type. He looks like he'll be ready to go that night, and, and that's what I'm expecting. If you look at your record, you lost back-to-back -back fights, uh, Tyron Woodley and Nate Moore, but that was back, Tyron was back in 2010. Yeah, Nate sure. Nate Moore was 2011. Like, you haven't lost in a long time. Yeah. But you've only had really four fights since, uh, since January of 2011, and your last loss. You've only had four fights since then, which isn't bad. But usually sure. Bellator, they tend to, if they have guys in tournaments, they tend to get a lot quicker, quicker matches going on, tend a little bit more fighting. You fought over in MFC for a little bit, uh, maximum fighting championships. You beat Diego Lima. You know, uh, you've had some pretty good talent. How come you've only fought a couple times each year since 2011? Was there a reason for that, or was it just the way the fight system worked out for you? Well, um, it's the way the fight system works out. You know, um, I also like to mention I've, haven't lost since I've trained full time too, and that's another thing. I'm oh. down at Coconut Creek, training full time now. So uh, that's been two years now. I bless American Top Team has helped me that way, and uh, I feel good, man. Things are clicking. It's the fight game, man. It's not easy. Um, I also I uh, don't have a manager, you know, and uh, so I kind of word of mouth is how I get my fights, and uh, that's that's why there's kind of a little delay, you know. In between fights, oh, and it doesn't still, work out that way, too. You, you know? still don't have a manager. I still don't have a manager. Well, you know, most managers are taking anywhere from 10 to 20 percent, depending on the manager. But if they sure. got you two more fights a year, would that be beneficial to have them at the sure. manager? I, I'm not going to say that. It, I mean, they're definitely helpful. I just didn't have anybody, nobody was brought to me that I can trust and feel comfortable with. And so, uh, you know, I'd, I'd pay guys a percentage to find a fight. If I got a fight that way, they got a percentage, and that's how I was getting my fights, you know. But at that point, you know, I don't want to give any percentages to anybody I didn't know and feel comfortable with. I'm more than happy to do it if uh, you, you've earned my trust. But Even even at American Top Team, there's so many fighters down there with so many different managers. You didn't find any one of those guys that you could mesh with that were managing one of your friends? Well, I mean, honestly, uh, being at American Top Team helped in the early going. I was kind of stuck with the MFC there. Um, for a while because they had a problem trying to find somebody for me to defend that belt against uh, between, you know, crossing that border, you know, it's not easy. And then um, whatever other reasons, it, it was just hard to get um, a, a defense on my belt there. And uh, so there was quite a big delay there with that. You know, I had to wait for that contract to expire in order to move on. And another problem is, is most guys are in this now as a business. And when you started, guys went in to fight, you know, now people are, are, it's not a bad idea, but they're, they're in it for the long haul and they're picking their fights, you know, and what happens is a name comes across, you know, my lap or their, or my opponent's lap. If it's my name, they go and sure dog, they go and figure out my record and they see who I fought and they realize I'm a wrestler. Maybe it's this and that. So, you know, there's difficulty in, in getting fights in the fight game, you know, sometimes. Since, since you've been training full time down at, down at American Top Team and your boxing, your hand speed has improved tremendously since then. But you've never really gone away from the wrestling aspect where a lot of wrestlers, myself included, once we get that hand power, we oh, screw it, we're going to be boxers now. We can knock guys out. And it, and it kind of puts us away a little bit. We get, we get into problems with it. You didn't sure. seem to do that. How, how did you stay true to wrestling the entire time, even though your hands were getting better and, and getting more power. I appreciate that compliment. I work really a lot on my hands. So, um, yeah, that's nice to hear that. I think it's instinctive. You know, um, I don't really set game plans. You know, I go in there 
And I think instinctively wrestling takes over. I love to box. I love to kickbox and Muay Thai. But uh, I think it's just um, it's what happens. It's what presents itself in the in the scrap, you know. What uh, what's it like now? Since you fought Tyron Woodley and lost to him, now he comes down quite a bit to train for his fights. What's yeah. it like having him in the room? Do you guys train together now when he's when he's in town or? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, um, you know, we definitely go into wrestling. We've definitely gone in and sparred with one another. And there's nothing, you know. Um, back in the day, I wanted that fight again just because he he beat me in my hometown and it was questionable, and I wanted to get that that back. But um, you know. Going and training with a good camp, you know, you make sacrifices. One of the sacrifices was that, you know, he's a teammate now and, you know, it is what it is. You know, if it, it matched up some way where we were going to fight for a belt, I would no, have no problem fighting him. He's not a resident of Coconut Creek, but uh, he's still American top team affiliate. And, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't fight him unless it was for a belt. And uh, that ain't going to be the case anyways now. So I've moved but, on. But there is a but there is a chance uh, that you two would fight if, if the chip. If chance arose and you guys had to fight for a belt, you would fight each other. Sure, man. Yeah, there's just a handful of guys I wouldn't fight just because of, of you know, they live with here that we train together every day and they're close friends, you know, and um, and I, you know, I like Tyron. He's a great dude, but, um, you know, it's, it is what it is. It's the fight game. I'm not, I'll fight anybody almost. There's a, a couple people yeah. I wouldn't, but. You know, there's that whole mindset of like the AKA team where none of those guys will fight each other ever. You know, it's just kind of how they do it. And then American yeah. Top Team, you kind of, depending on which guy I'm interviewing, it's kind of a mixed bag. Some guys yeah. say, no, I'll never fight anybody from American Top Team no matter what. You're like, hey, look, he's, you know, he's part of American Top Team. He has affiliate gym up in St. Louis. I'd fight Tyron Woodley again, even though we're both American Top Team. And it's, yeah. it's like that wrestling mentality. You know, how many times you've been in a tournament finals yeah. against your best no. friend? Because that's just how it worked out. It's like, okay, just I got to win. how it works out, man. There's no animosity toward one another. We're out here to get belts, you know. And take care of our family, so what at whatever cost, you know. Since you've been training full time, and and you moved, made the move down to Coconut Creek from Portland, what what's it like for you outside the gym? What do you do mm -hmm. now? Because Portland's a totally different way than than Coconut Creek is. Like it's a totally yeah. total mentalities. Totally, what you were doing up totally in Portland just, for fun, you're not doing it now. What are you doing for fun now in Florida? Well, uh, back home in Portland, man, I had a job, so that's what I was doing on my spare time, you know. Now. So uh, that's my spare time, you know, and uh, it takes up a lot of time. You know, you you know, you love your children. You want to be around them. So, uh, you know, I, I don't really do a lot, man. I'm a pretty, you know, I like to think I like to do good things and have a fun story to tell. But at this point in time, I train and I uh, hang out with my family, man. We go to the beach and we kick it, if anything, you know. Other than that, we're just kicking it. How many how many kids do you have? I uh, just had a, a second last, last December, so two. Wow, how's how's the sleeping patterns? How's the the daddy daycare when you come in between training? Because the kids want to play, but you just got done. You need some rest. Like, true. Sure, actually, that just happened too. You know, I uh, yeah, uh, I have a good wife. You know, it takes care of things, man. But um, other than that, dude, uh, yeah, it's no thing, man. I mean, uh, that's being a wrestler, man. We put ourselves through pretty uh, difficult situations, and we overcome those situations. It's not, it's nothing. You know, it's nothing at all. Sleeping. We'll find it. We'll find a way. Find a way. Yeah. Well, Nathan, thanks for coming on here with MMA Odds Breaker. Good luck this next. Uh, it's, I guess it's in two weeks against uh, Andy Urich. It's going to be an interesting fight. I want to see how this one pulls off. But I think uh, with your wrestling background, you'll be you'll be okay no matter what happens. All right. I appreciate that, Frank. Thanks for the interview, man. You got it, bud. We'll talk to you soon. Take it easy, man. Peace. What up, ATT?